WMDT 47 News, live at 6. Good evening and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Emily Lampa. More news in less time starts now. Topping our news tonight, a huge drug bust in Bridgeville, Delaware. Last night, 40 police officers from seven agencies converged on three locations within the Lafferty Lane apartment complex off of Route 13. This after a three-month investigation by the Bridgeville and Milford Police Departments. Police seized an undisclosed amount of money, marijuana, crack cocaine, and drug paraphernalia. The following individuals were arrested as a result of this investigation. Police say 25-year-old Akisha Scott, 25-year-old Michael Drummond, 27-year-old Letitia Williams, and 37-year-old Ellsworth Butler were all charged with possession of drug paraphernalia along with a laundry list of other charges. And now the very latest on the Wendy's armed robbery. Salisbury police tell us that they are still searching for the suspects. It all went down last night around 1030 at the Wendy's near the Kmart on Route 50. Few details are being released at this time, but new tonight, we now know that the suspects didn't get away with any cash. If you have any information in this case, call Salisbury police. And of course, you can find the details in these stories and much more online. Just log on to WMDT.com. A martial arts master, also known for his work on the big screen, is in Salisbury today, fighting a very real battle to save young lives. WMDT's Mark Johnson met up with Chris Casamasa today and has his story. Four, five, quick turn. One, two, three, four, five, quick turn. One, Kids across the country consider him a hero. Chris Casamasa has an eight-degree black belt. And if you're a fan of movies like Mortal Kombat, that's him in yellow playing the role of Scorpion. But you may be surprised to know that one of Chris's greatest challenges and opponents in life is actually childhood obesity. Off screen, he fights for the youth of America. And almost three out of five children are either overweight or extremely overweight. And uh, I want to do what I can to help the kids uh, get fit and, and get in shape, but do it in a fun way. You know, a lot of people think exercise is boring and dull, and honestly it is. But if it's done the right way, it becomes a lot of fun. Feet apart. Feet together. Our Massa introduced his kick and fit program to the youngsters at Mitchell's Martial Arts in Salisbury, where he taught them cardio kickboxing, yoga, and action packed moves the key ingredients for successful calorie loss. Every single kid that's ever done kick and fit has lost 10 pounds or more. And really 10 pounds is the minimum. A lot of them are losing 15, 20 pounds. Some of the youth we spoke to participating in the program highly recommend it. For kids that are too big, they need to come here. Mark Johnson, WMDT 47 News. Now, Castle Massa also helped Mitchell's Martial Arts celebrate their 15th anniversary celebration today. Chris operates his own chain of martial arts schools on the West Coast. And another celebrity out in the community today, WMDT's Gina DeVecchio, visited Salisbury Middle School this morning. She spent a couple of hours teaching children and teens in the STEM program a little bit about weather patterns and their effects. STEM, as many people know, is an acronym for science, technology, engineering, and math. And we're trying to uh, uh, interest students and expose students to the many different levels and layers of STEM, of science, of engineering. STEM Saturday is well into its third year. It's used to cater just to middle, it used to cater just to middle school students, but as you just saw, it has expanded to include elementary students as well. And now to college students. Finding a job after college can be challenging, but the USDA wants to help. Not only are they offering a full ride to a university to pursue a career in agriculture, but they are also guaranteeing employment. WMDT's Aliana Gomez tells us how in today's Meet the Money Givers. Meet the Money Givers. I came through as a scholar and 14 years later still with the department. Lisa Purnell, 1890 program liaison for the U.S. Department of Agriculture, is encouraging students to follow in her footsteps and take advantage of the opportunity of a lifetime. It's a scholarship worth well over $120,000 that covers tuition, fees, room and board, a laptop and printer, and not to mention guaranteed employment. Each year the student will work at the USDA location and we will pay for transportation to and from the duty station and then upon graduation they would be converted to permanent employment with the sponsoring USDA agency. And it's available to high school and college students with the exception of college seniors. Here are the enrollment requirements. They must be a U.S. citizen, possess a 3.0 or higher GPA and 
would like to study agriculture, food, natural resources, or related sciences. Because of the perks, this scholarship is competitive. At least two will be chosen locally, and one of them could be you. Aliana Gomez, WMDT 47 News. Now the deadline to apply is February 1st. For more information about this scholarship, contact the Delmarva Education Foundation at 410-219-3336 or log on to our website and click on the DEF logo. And DEF made their presence known out in the community today with something very appealing for students. Hundreds of scholarship seekers made their way to the center at Salisbury Mall where 31 different agencies are offering money for those wishing to pursue their academic dreams. Students had the chance to meet prospective lenders and sign up for potential scholarship money. One student explains how she likes that the fair caters to all academic needs. There are specific scholarships for your specific major, your specific age. There's even some for just women or African Americans and whites. And it's a lot easier to find scholarships for you. According to DEF, there are over 500 local scholarships available to those needing financial aid. Agencies who participated included Atlantic General Hospital, Delmarva Poultry, and Community Foundation. WMDT 47 News first forecast. Good evening, I'm meteorologist Gina DeVecchio. Well, I sure had a blast today at Salisbury Middle School. However, we were learning about clouds, and the clouds held off earlier today. Now they're beginning to move on in right now, and our temperatures are dropping. So it got up to around 40 degrees in many locations. Now we are near freezing there at Chucky's home in Lewis, 32 degrees, as well as Tom Lockerman's home in Bridgeville, 34 at Ted Parker's home in Millsboro, as well as in Ocean City, Kelly Shoemate's home in Snow Hill, 36 degrees right now in Salisbury, 33 at Kenny Wheatley's home in Cambridge, 39 degrees at the Hubricks home in Waterview as well as there at Summers Cove Marina in Crisfield, Maryland. So these numbers are going to drop and into the 20s. So it's going to be a chilly one out there holding on to the clouds for the overnight hours. Few clouds in the morning but temperatures really aren't going to rise. That sun will come up but numbers only in the mid 30s. Emily. Thanks so much Gina. Now here's a look at your national headlines. Republican presidential candidates Newt Gingrich and Rick Santorum were campaigning at the same place yesterday, and get this, it was on purpose. They took part in a forum sponsored by two of the largest GOP organizers in South Carolina. Both candidates are vying for the same evangelical and Tea Party-minded voters. Gingrich said he had no plans to take any cheap shots at Rick Santorum. Santorum, however, criticized Gingrich's positions on illegal immigration. And here you can see Rick Santorum stumping for support today. During this stop in South Carolina, he told the crowd not to be swayed into thinking that the race already belongs to Mitt Romney. Santorum said Romney hasn't even officially won the Iowa caucuses, and he could still come out on top there. Great. Iowa is going through the process of certification of those, of those numbers, and those numbers are changing right now. So... Everyone who says, well, Iowa has been decided, Iowa has not yet been decided. The idea that Mitt Romney has won Iowa is still a very much of an open question that will be decided next week, not, not two weeks ago, as they go through the, the certification of those numbers. And those numbers are changing. And so I just, uh, just throw that open to you. Now you'll recall that Romney beat Santorum by just eight votes in Iowa. The results are expected to be certified next week. Voters in South Carolina head to the polls next Saturday on the 21st. And now a sad ending to the search for the missing Montana mother who went jogging last Saturday and never came home. Authorities say Sherry Arnold is dead and two men are being questioned in connection with her death. ABC's Clayton Sandell has more. This was not the update the people of Sydney, Montana had hoped for. Friday morning, the high school where Sherry Arnold was a popular math teacher announced she was dead. Investigators later said an anonymous tip led them to a 47-year-old man. He was taken into custody. He is currently being held in the Williams County Jail. Additionally, a second male individual, age 22, is being detained for questioning in Rapid City, South Dakota. The two men have not been charged. Sherry Arnold vanished a week ago while on a morning jog. Massive searches turned up only one of her running shoes. Her body has not been found. They won't say why, but investigators told Sherry's family they do not think she is alive. On a Facebook page set up to help find Sherry, her family thanked the community for support during this deeply sad time. 
Arnold School, where her kids also attend classes, brought in extra counselors to help students and staff. Arnold's death comes at a time when an oil boom has ballooned the town's population with out of state workers. Nobody is blaming oil workers in this case, but the mayor says while many workers are law abiding, some bad apples are driving a spike in crime. We own the day, they own the night. So there has been an increase. The night has definitely changed for us, and unfortunately, Sherry was running in early hours in the morning. Now we're told residents of Sydney claim things like this don't happen in their community, and they hope that this is an isolated incident. And coming up, is being stressed out the new norm? We'll explain in your family health report. Plus, in 90 seconds, meteorologist Gina DeVecchio will be back with your complete forecast. Stay with us. You're watching WMDT. Find these stories and more at WMDT.com.